is how I play the game! That is an epic fucking intro, dude. And I have to warn everyone. Warning. What you may see right now is going to be absolutely disgusting. Sound good? Alright. That's... Sounds good to me. Major Riot just did a hundred minutes. Would you, would you be scared if you were sued by your former psychics and their lawyer is Dr. Nightmare? I don't have any former psychics. I don't know who the hell Dr. Nightmare is. <laughs> There'd literally be nothing to sue me over. First of all... Anything that I did with those guys is way too far in the past for them to sue me for. That's number one. Number two, uh, you know, there were never any any contracts or anything that we had in place for any of the stuff we did together. So they don't have anything to a leg to stand on. If they, and what would they sue me for, honestly? I have no clue. All I think it was, like, money. Like, you know, I guess people say that Howard's bitter that he never, like, made any money or something. I don't know. He was barely in any of my content. I don't know why he thought he was going to get paid to be in my content. It was John, who was driving ridiculous distances and really... You know, treating it like a job. The once a week that we did co-op, and I paid him handsomely for all of his stuff, so I couldn't imagine why anyone would ever try to sue me for anything. Fuck you, you fucking greedy piece of shit. Go fuck yourself. I certainly didn't sexually harass those guys or anything like that. Yeah, Tom Willis Show, I don't know why people in the, in the stream chat are doing this weird, uh, hair flip meme tonight. I'm lost. More than likely, you know what it is. More than likely, it's a fucking restreamer made a joke about hair flip, and now all these idiots repeat it like a parrot because they have no fucking brains in their heads. I don't know what else to say. <laughs> That's just usually what happens. We're up to sixty-two dollars in tips. Thank you to a simple, well, kind of man, for the twenty-dollar tip. I appreciate that, and he gets us some big headway to our tips goal for tonight. Okay. <laughs> oh yeah! Super happy seven now. <laughs> we can belly. Oh yeah! <laughs> What's going on? Do it, do it. I'm a mature adult. You know the truth? I'm probably one of the most overall mature adults in the country. Microsoft canceled the ability for you to get a year of Xbox Live Gold for 60 bucks. It's always been that price since they started charging for it during the Xbox 360 era. Today they got rid of it. The only way you can buy Xbox Live Gold now is either three months or one month. For one month, it's 10 bucks. For three months, it's 25 bucks. The reason they've done this is because they it's basically artificially increasing the price of Xbox Live Gold. Why? Because they don't want anyone to get it. What they want you to do is buy that Game Pass bundle where you get Xbox Game Pass and Xbox Live together, which is only slightly more expensive now. So if you actually do the math, okay, it's now going to be roughly around $100 at its cheapest to have Xbox Live Gold for the year. Or I think the math is like $120 to get that and Game Pass. So obviously everyone's going to say, well, if I'm already forced to pay $100 because they raised the price by $40, I'll pay the extra $20 and I'll get Game Pass for the year as well. So it's a scam. Phil stole fan donations that went towards a Project 7 reboot. Now what I did, we just pocket that. Really it is. It's a switch. It's a bullshit. They're raising the price. I don't, I personally don't want Xbox Game Pass. I don't. I've used it in, in, you know, the times that I've had it, maybe twice, I don't benefit from having it. I don't spend so much on my Xbox that I need Game Pass every month. But essentially, they're telling me if I ever want to do anything online with Xbox, I'm going to have to pay this big amount of money to do it because they're canceling the year subscription for Xbox Live Gold, which is fucking bullshit in my opinion. So, I think it really is a, a, tra a tactic to make more money. I think it's messed up. Oh, Phil's a scammer, and Phil took the money that he said was for taxes, and he did it to pay for a wedding. Speaking of which, guys, I'm playing for about another half an hour on stream, and we still have about a ways to go here. About $36 left to hit the tip skull, guys, so just throwing that out there. Now people are complaining and saying Derek got timed out. I'm not aware of that. I don't know what happened. <laughs> now free Derek to the dollar. So the mod's gotta go! The mod's gotta go! Defund the mods! The mod's gotta go! Here you go. Dark side feel the lull bull says chat forgets what a lean looks like. I don't even know what you guys are talking about at this point. I don't. I don't know what's happening, but we're up to $74 in tips. Noah Taylor just did a 106 bit cheer. Be sure the nice have a good night, Phil. I can't wait until the 200 vest streak. Me too, although we didn't hit the vest goal for tonight yet. And I'm not around forever. I'm only around for about another 20 minutes, but uh, you know, I am looking forward to Friday. I think Friday's gonna be a really fun 
event. So hopefully we make it. Mark McCauley says, hint, hint. Do no hint, hint. I'm outright telling you, I really would appreciate some help via tipping. <laughs> That's not a hint. Cove Fefe, just to be $25, said I got COVID-19. There's a 99.96 chance I'll, I'll survive. So take my money. Alrighty then, ladies and gentlemen, we have hit the tips go for tonight. Yes, we have. <laughs> so, my initial impressions of Paper Mario and the Origami King. Honestly, I like it, although admittedly the game is super easy. Like, the combat's not challenging at all. It's more about puzzles, it's about aligning the enemies properly, and it's about finding these hidden items. And, of course, the cuteness of the story, the quirkiness, some funny stuff in the writing. Uh, it's not a challenging game at all. I would say this game is definitely for kids. Um, but that's fine. And I'm enjoying it. Like, this is a nice late-night chill stream for me. L minimum effort, minimum money and time involved, maximum profit. I spoke with an actual lawyer, okay? And the lawyer advised that basically, I'm kind of between a rock and a hard place here because everyone has this issue. <clears throat> that apparently, unless you're a bigwig, you know, there's really no direct line of contact. And... They recommended I send a letter, an actual physical letter, to Twitch Legal, which you can find, I guess, a mailing address for Twitch Legal <clears throat> online. And they said, yeah, you know, it might take a while, but hopefully at least if they get an actual letter with your information and the situation, they'll respond to it. Okay? Um, <clears throat> I don't know if I really like that idea. Because they may never respond to it. They could take five weeks to respond to it, and in five weeks, who cares, you know, Obviously, way more can be happening. You know what I mean? Um, so, I don't know if I like that idea at all. <clears throat> now, I actually talked a little bit more about this with someone in regards to legally, what can I do? And essentially, well, here's what I was told, basically. Yeah, there's legal recourse. Like, what's going on right now? I could go after the person who is filing the false DMCA claims. Like, I could sue them. And this would basically open up Twitch to having to give up information because right now they didn't even give me a legal reason for why this is happening, which is not correct. They have to, and they haven't. Um, so basically this would now open them up to, they have to do the right thing or else they're legally liable. Uh, the problem is apparently from what I understand to sue someone like this is insanely expensive. Wow. I'm still waiting for Twitch to assign my log to, to give me the information about what happened on Friday and so I can file the, the, the counter DMCA claim. If a second DMCA claim, false claim, hits me, all right, I think I'm done. I don't want to be done. I want to be here. I want to use Twitch. I love it. I built a beautiful community here, people who I hang out with on a daily basis, and we have a lot of fun. But I can't work at a place where on a moment's notice, I just keep getting suspended for doing nothing. Because of troll activities and the company doesn't do due diligence. I can't. <clears throat> we hit the tier 2 subscriber goal for the channel for the month of July. That means that the upcoming viewer's choice event not only is a go, but now we're going to be doing two games for viewer's choice, not just one. Yeah, these, these fuckers slurp it up like fucking noodles. Like, hype. Oh, ooh, I gotta eat it. I gotta eat it. I gotta eat the hype. Oh, Last night, just on a whim... I saw someone was talking about Metacritic scores. So I said, you know what? I'd like to go see what's going on on Metacritic. Because originally when The Last of Us 2 came out last month, the, the, the actual journalist score on Metacritic was insanely high. It was like a 98 or something insanely stupid like that. But the user scores were terrible. It was like a 3, right? Like a 3 out of 10 or something like that. It was like really bad. It was like such a, ch a difference between what the users and gamers who are actually playing the game were saying versus journalists. So I wanted to see how that is right now. So I went and looked, and I think right now, The Last of Us 2 is sitting at a 91 journalism score, all right? And like a 51, right? A 51 um, user score. <laughs> Which is funny, because guess what I reviewed the game? 5 out of 10. And now the user score seems to be in line with what I said in my official review, all right? So then I said, just for the hell of it, now we know Ghost of Tsushima has only been out for a few days, okay? Let's see what people are saying about Ghost of Tsushima. Well, the journalist score is 83, which is hilarious because the majority of the scores are great, ranging anywhere between, I would say, like an 85 to a 90, if not up towards, some people gave it full score, 10 out of 10. But the people who reviewed it like 60 out of 100 
when you read the reviews, you realize they're just a bunch of fucking idiots. Oh, this game is too similar to other games. It doesn't break the mold with the story. It doesn't make you... It doesn't tear at your heartstrings. And it doesn't give you a feeling of it is something that takes a risk. It's like, wait a minute, what? So you're telling me the only games that are fun are the ones that are completely original experiences, right? Now, I'll be honest with you guys. I was very similarly critical with Horizon Zero Dawn. I, when I was playing Horizon Zero Dawn, I said, you know what? I feel that this game isn't as great as people are making it out to be because it feels like this is a game that I played before. It's a bunch of elements from other games that were kind of glued or taped together. And although I did like the graphics and the story, I thought that the gameplay was lacking a bit. Because it felt like stuff I've already done before. Alright? So, I am not above criticizing myself for kind of saying similar things in the past. Okay? But let me tell you something. In regards to all the other games that I've been playing this year, this game so far in the first four and a half hours has blown me away and makes me feel more enjoyment in my first major session than I think any other game I played in 2020. He's talk talking so much. Blah, 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 blah. What are you talking about? Shut up. Nobody cares. So to me, that makes me feel like, wow, this game is great. Okay, now, maybe as I play it longer, I will feel that the game gets repetitive and it's not original enough. You know what I mean? I don't know. I mean, I'm, I'm in the early stages of the game. But when I read a review like that, I'm sorry, but here's what I think. So this is a guy who when he plays a game, all he's looking for is artsy-fartsy bullshit. Oh, <clears throat> did the game do something different? Oh, you mean like The Last of Us 2, which, you know, makes you feel miserable the whole game, which most games don't do. Completely ruins characters from the first game. Makes you play as the fucking villain who killed Joel for the second half of the game and then tries to humanize them. Okay, so yeah, The Last of Us 2 did stuff that was different, but was it fun? When I played The Last of Us 2, I would feel like shit playing it. Versus now, I'm playing, uh, you know, I'm playing Ghost of Tsushima, and I'm really enjoying the game. Every moment I've played it so far is pure enjoyment. And it fucking splashed all over me. What the hell? It seriously and splashed all over my face and my pants. What the fuck? That's different to me. See what I mean? So when you tell me this game is a 6 out of 10 because you didn't feel miserable playing it every moment and that's something different, I say go fuck yourself. Your review is invalid. You're not reviewing a game fairly because you're some weirdo looking for some fringe fucking experience. You know, just because that's what you're looking for. You're going into reviewing a game with an agenda. Your agenda is, where's my weird fringe shit, man? Not, oh, is this game a good, valid gameplay experience for the person who's going to play it? The average gamer who sits down, will they enjoy the game? Oh, I'm not reviewing it for that. I'm looking for art house bullshit. Great. Good for you. Then don't review the game, you dumb fuck. You know, and then their review, this 60 review, gets put into... You know, the, the, all the, the oh, major journalism reviews and then the Metacritic score tanks because some idiot gave it a 60 when this moron doesn't even know what the fuck uh, the purpose of a video game is. Less toxicity, more positivity. What a contrast. Last of Us 2, 91 journalist score, 51 user score. Ghost of Tsushima, 83 journalist score, like 91 user score. Or is it 93 user score? Like the user score is insanely high. People are loving this game. Do you want to play the fucking game? Overnight, I actually got some contributions. I received a $50 tip overnight. As soon as I turned on the stream today, like, I'm not even kidding, like, the moment the stream went live, just a little bit over an hour ago, I received a $99 tip. So, by the way, guys, we hit the vest street. So, yes, I will be wearing the vest as soon as the camera goes on and we start with gameplay, but, you know, we're not there yet. Oh, my God. It's terrible. Still has indoctrinated children who send him money blatantly milking for money it's a money pit it's gone just gone like that in an instant fucking gone i just care about money that i just can't help it by ebay contributions are mandatory but i need your help i am appealing directly to you no decency, no respect, no common sense, no fucking maturity. It's the guy who just doesn't get reality. 